everyone, it is me again. How are you doing? Hope you're keeping all right. Uh, I'm kneeling again in this corner of the studio because I promised last time that I would show you some stuff in this cabinet. So I shall show you some stuff uh, in this cabinet. This is going to be another I finished an army uh, video. I finished two armies, in fact, since uh, last I saw you, or since, you know, <laughs> before uh, the, the April hiatus. Um, and this is the first one that I finished as part of the Odds and Sods uh, challenge, which you'll know that I've been working on uh, this year, just finishing off some bits and pieces to try and get armies to a finished level. Finished, you know, they're about never finished, but uh, fairly uh, complete playable. Uh, painted the models that I have um, at any rate. Oh, excuse me, my knees, are, my knees are not happy about being down here. Never mind, it'll be all right, it'll be fine. I'm young yet. Uh, so this cabinet, maybe you haven't seen this cabinet, you might recognise this, uh, my Hero Quest box art diorama from a couple of years ago, that's uh, in this cabinet. Um, this shelf has some random assortment bits and pieces, there's my um, Dark Elves uh, army book cover uh, diorama, uh, which maybe you've seen, maybe you haven't seen, actually I haven't finished that one, I need to finish the banner on it. Um, there's some of my familiar stuff uh, on here and also at the back there uh, some dark crystal miniatures that I haven't got around to painting up yet you know the lovely big chunky grenadier ones um, which I'm looking forward to painting but I'm also quite scared uh, because you see it's a bit of a, a bit of a commitment um, painting those. Uh, this level here uh, this has got all of the dreamstone uh, figures that have been made and painted over the last um, few years and I shall let you into a secret. Um, very likely that the Dreamstone stuff uh, is probably going to be disappearing off the shelves uh, from July. That's when our three-year license is up uh, and given the sales uh, I'm not going to be pushing for, for renewing it. So if you are interested in picking up any Dreamstone stuff um, it's a good idea to pick it up in the next month or so because uh, it will start disappearing from the shop after then. There's already quite a bit of stuff that's not there and part of the reason that I'm thinking of discontinuing it is that the moulds are worn out um, and it's not really worth financially worth um, remaking them. So, you know, what we've got now is what we've got. Um, but this shelf down here, this is what I wanted to show you. This is uh, the stuff that I've finished on. Uh, I, well, I'll, show you this at the bottom shelf as well. I should say the bottom shelf, or it's not the bottom, the cabinet carries on down, but this is the last shelf that's got um, any miniatures on it. Uh, this is my barbarian horde that you've seen. Um, I might get it out again and take some proper photos at some point, but you've seen it recently, so not, not dwelling on that today. But this is um, my Egyptian high elf army. Uh, and if you've been following the blog, all the photos are on the blog, um, honestly you can see it much better there uh, and I have explained it a little bit I think on the blog as well but uh, I'll talk through it now and show you some photos from that uh, and this is actually this is a reasonably significant army for me because this is the army that got me back into uh, Warhammer or at least it's the army that I started when I got back into Warhammer so uh, I moved to Bristol uh, and I met a chap that I ended up then uh, studying theology with for six years, which was a pleasure. Um, but one of the things that was a great pleasure was that he got me back into Warhammer. And I was also living with a guy who uh, was into miniature gaming. Uh, so that was a, a fairly natural slope. Uh, revived my interest. Um, and um, he and I went out and bought the 8th edition Warhammer box set when it came out and he took the Skaven uh, and I wanted the Skaven but I ended up with the High Elves so sorry, <laughs> sorry uh, Andy, uh, yeah um, at least you have uh, painted the Skaven faster than I painted the High Elves although I had a good start on you I just couldn't, we'll get that. <laughs> I didn't finish for ages and ages and ages but I've now finished. Um, so yeah, that, that was the box set that we bought and he took half and I took half. Um, and I was excited to uh, paint the griffin. I was excited about a plastic griffin, um, but I hadn't painted for ages. So uh, I picked up some Vallejo paints because that's what the shop had. It didn't have Citadel, it had Vallejo paints. This was a, a hobby shop, sort of five minutes walk from my shop, uh, from my, shop, from my house. So that was, uh, that was nice. Picked up some Vallejo, started getting back into it. Uh, I painted the uh, Swordmasters and the Lothan Seaguard and I quite quickly 
realised that I, yeah, I was not not a massive fan um, of the of the plastic sculpts. Um, so I started sort of looking around for other uh, for other things that could complement it, and I wanted to do a bit of an Egyptian theme rather than a normal uh, high elf theme because it seemed to be with the big tall sort of um, Egyptian crown helmets um, and the the um, sort of scale armor and the um, the long robes and the uh, fluting on the spears they just they looked quite Egyptian to my eye so I put uh, dotted some sort of scarabs and things around um, it's actually one of the things that got me sculpting as well um, that, that don't look closely because <laughs> the sculpting that I did on these is really quite rough but uh, it got yeah, it got me back into doing a bit of sculpting um, and uh, yeah so I, I painted those but I wasn't a big fan um, of the plastic so I was looking for something else that would complement and I had um, the uh, Fellowship of the Ring um, miniature uh, miniatures game um, elves uh, and the men of Gondor and the goblins for some reason when I got rid of my um, hobby stock <laughs> in my teens uh, I kept hold of those don't know why but anyway they came in handy because I used the elf archers and swordsmen they seem to match in quite well they're, they're obviously smaller but with a paint job they um, they don't they don't matter too much but I started looking on eBay for other uh, sort of affordable cheap let's say cheap uh, figures that I could add into this army that had a bit of an Egyptian vibe to them and I came across the uh, she elves from uh, the Keltos range that uh, Brigade models now do. Uh, I don't know if they did at that time, but anyway, I found them on uh, eBay, and they were there were loads of them around, and they were pretty cheap. So I bought them up, um, and so I've added to the uh, Lothan Sea Guard and the Swordmasters unit with those, and also added a few in uh, as champions uh, in the other um, in the other units. The other thing that I came across was the War Gods of Egyptus figures. Uh, and again, these are, are still available. In fact, I was uh, across the hall from Crocodile Games um, at Salute, uh, and I was eyeing up the banner and going, oh, I want five minutes. Someone give me five minutes to run across and have a look. Uh, and at the end of the day, I did get five minutes to run across and have a look, but they didn't have any of uh, the Basti Cat Warriors or the Anubis Warriors. Um, they only had crocodiles and the uh, Olympus range that I, I'm not particularly interested in so didn't get any of those um, but uh, this time that I was looking to collect this army um, I managed to find quite a lot of the Basti uh, cat person warriors um, on eBay for pretty cheap money so I managed to pick those up and I've had them for a long time I did the archers um, pretty fast and I did the kind of um, uh, the main um, general guy and his uh, what should we say? His harem. That's that's probably the right words. Um, I did those pretty early on, but then the the rest of the warriors I've, I've only done fairly recently as part of the odds and sods um, challenge, along with the crocodiles that I picked up more recently. The the Sabeki. I don't really know what to use them as in a high elf army. So you know maybe uh, if anyone has any ideas, what what high elf wise could I uh, take two two beefy crocodiles as? Um, most of these cat people, obviously the archers are just regular archers, but most of these um, cat people I'm using as white lions, um, d just because of the pun, right? I mean, I haven't painted them white, but they're, they're cats, you know, big cats, so they're white lions. Um, I think that's especially appropriate for the, the general and his big henchmen. Um, maybe not so much for the rest of his retinue, but hey, yeah, that's what they're gonna be, uh, that's what they're gonna be counted as uh, in any case. Um, so then uh, I, I got on, uh, jumping all over the place here, sorry, I was going to do this as a, like a proper chronology, it was all falls out and everything, but I'm just jumping all over the place. Um, what really killed this army when I was uh, painting it through the first time was the uh, the griffin. I actually, I got to the griffin, I was like, ah, oh, right, I've, I've painted enough units now, I'm going to have some fun, I'm going to paint the big, the big griffin model. And I got really excited to paint it, and I started painting it with washes and dry brushing and mm, it's what really turned me off big plastic kits because maybe things have changed slightly maybe 
but all of the fur and the feathers are like these weird sort of triangular prism things. They look very stylized. Um, and the feathers have got really low relief on them. Uh, and the uh, the main body of the of the lion, it's a, yeah, it's a lion, isn't it? I've painted it a, a white as like a, a snow leopardy kind of color, but it's, it's a lion. Um, it was all really smooth, so you put a wash on it, and of course it just it completely disappears um, because there's no texture to pick up. So this is one of the things that really drives me to put lots of texture onto the stuff that I'm sculpting and releasing with Oakbaum, so that you can put a wash on and you can actually see where the wash is. It doesn't all just completely disappear. Um, I, it, I remember this model being a complete nightmare, um, and I did it and I finished it, and I'm fairly happy with the result, but. If I were to do it, well, I wouldn't do it again now. <laughs> I'm tempted to pick up Trish uh, Carden's um, new griffin that she's uh, sculpted. That looks amazing and would be a really nice replacement for this one. But having painted this one, I'm kind of think, oh, I'll just, I'll just keep it there. Maybe I'll buy the other griffin and put it in my empire army or something. I don't need to use it again. Anyway, um, so I'm kind of, I'm quite happy with it, but I, I didn't enjoy it uh, and I wouldn't want to paint it again. Um, and yeah, it really, really turned me off um, plastic kits. Um, so it took a long time. In fact, it took up until last month to actually get summon, <laughs> summon the energy to get back onto this army. Go, right, I need to do this. The other thing is that I've rebased this army twice now. Um, so I rebased, I, everything was on plastic bases originally, of course, but then when I was buying lots off eBay, um, the Keltos stuff and the War God stuff that I was buying didn't come with any bases. So uh, it wasn't as easy back then to just buy, you know, big bags of plastic bases. So I thought, well, that's fine. I'll, I'll cut myself some MDF squares. You know, this is even before laser cutting, right? So they were, they were band sawed out. Um, MDF squares and I just left them pretty much as, M as bare MDF because it looked deserty to me so I mounted them all on that. Um, but then when I was coming back to this army um, afterwards uh, to, to get it finished I, t I wanted them to match in with the basing on my other um, armies. Now that's a big ask because these guys are on desert and the other guys are on grass and although I've sort of made the uh, undead work by uh, mixing in some earth and some uh, static grass and some sponge flock with the uh, snow that was on the bases. I didn't really want to put grass and dirt in with the desert thing. That didn't seem like it would. That didn't seem like it would work very well. <laughs> Dear, sorry, my cat is very sad. He's been alone all day and he's demanding my attention. Uh, he's not going to get it till I finish the video. So please be quiet, Moose. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, I didn't want to put any, any foliage on the desert, I wanted to keep it as very, very bare uh, desert. So what I ended up doing was just taking some plain black bases uh, and putting some desert um, stuff on top of them and relying on the black edge of the plastic base to give them some kind of similarity to the other uh, models that they've got. And I think it works pretty well. I think you know, if you put them on the table next to each other, the style of painting and the style of basing would be fairly uh, equivalent. Um, so after I'd rebased everything, then that gave me a little bit of, uh, of impetus to, to just crack on with it and get the final fin figures finished on this. And the last thing that I needed to do was the unit of uh, five Illyrian Reavers. Again, same problems with the horses. They, they have bits that, because of where the plastic kit fits together, they end up sort of trapping bits so you can't really get a paintbrush in to paint them, but I didn't want to take them apart again to paint into those bits. Um, because they're injection molded plastic, they've got flat areas on really quite strange places. So you've got quivers that sort of run into no detail. And do I paint that to look like the back of the horse? Do I paint that to look like the armor? Do I paint that to look like the quiver? All these sort of weird decisions that end up, none of them look right apart from like carving the plastic away and I didn't want to do any of that. Um, and just a, a complete inability to take a wash over the, the flanks of the horses, uh, and all sorts of, horrible horrible things but anyway I'm I think I'm pretty pleased well I am pretty pleased with the way that they've come up I think they've come up better than um, the units that I uh, painted a long time ago now how long ago was that eight years when did no it was longer than that anyway too long ago too long ago it says in the blog I think um, when the when the eighth edition box came out um, 
but I don't want to go back and repaint those, partly because I can't be bothered, but partly because I think it's quite nice to preserve what I painted at that time alongside what I'm painting now. So all I've done is I've added a few extra highlights into the old figures just to tie them into the, the new ones, because of course I've now changed paints again. I'm painting with foundry stuff now rather than Vallejo stuff, so I had to try and find some closer matches, and a lot of my Vallejo stuff has dried out and gone all thick because I haven't used it for so many years. So. Um, that was quite uh, that was quite a challenge getting the colour matching in, but I think I didn't manage uh, I didn't um, do too bad a job, uh, and they're all done now along with their um, um, what's he uh, Dragon Prince um, banner bearer who's alongside them now. The banner gave me a bit of trouble because the banners on all of the other figures are something else that I really hate, like raised detail on banners. It just it looks really odd to my eye, but I guess it's fine for people who don't want to paint freehand stuff. But because it's there on all of the other banners, I wanted to put it on this one, but I didn't have a spare banner with raised detail because I don't like them, so I tend to get rid of them if I if I find them. Um, so I had to sort of um, whittle down some dark elf bits and some bits of jewellery and things and stick them on and then paint them in as if they were raised. And I think it looks I think it looks all right. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, this is not going to be an army that I'm, I'm that I'm showcasing anytime soon or putting into any painting competitions. But actually, it contains some figures that I really, really like. The Keltos figures and the uh, War Gods of Egyptus figures are stunning. I really recommend them. They're they're great fun to paint and they're really lovely models. Um, Chris Fitzpatrick's sculpting on the Egyptus stuff is just superb, absolutely superb. Um, really fine high level sculpting recommend that range even though they're quite expensive and quite difficult to get hold of um, in the UK now because uh, international posting is so um, expensive but I recommend those don't recommend the uh, 8 fed GW plastics maybe GW's plastics have got better since then but I think they still do that weird sort of stylized fur and flat areas and that. I'm, I'm not touching it I'm just it's not worth it I'm not touching it I'm going to stick with <laughs> with old lead and modern lead that it, it looks like the old stuff um, but anyway, that army is done. Uh, so, uh, thank you for joining me for a uh, look at them. Um, and I've got another army finished, and I will uh, tell you what well, that is next week. So, do join me again. If you've enjoyed this, like the video, leave me a comment below, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications thing so that you get all the alerts button thing so that you get uh, notifications when there's a new video. Um, and do join us on the various like, bound social medias uh, for for more chat. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll see you next week.